So before I even get started on this video, let me just say, yes, I know Moto has symmetry, but it doesn't have the symmetry modifier from 3D Studio Max, which is what I'm always harping on that I want when I talk to people about Moto. So this video is going to be me showing an example a mesh op stack that more or less shows the functionality and shows that it can be done inside of Moto. Now what it will need after this video is somebody smarter than me who's more more in tune with the Moto SDK and all that kind of stuff to make it a reality. And then I can throw money at that person and we can all be happy. So let's dive into Moto and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So for ease of, of reading, I've gone ahead and, and blown up the uh, mesh item to be a little bigger on the screen so you can see what's happening on, you know, on YouTube in case it's a little small. So I'm gonna turn off my various modifiers here and just show you the base elements. So the base mesh here that I'm calling is the shape that I want to be uh, mirrored in symmetry. Uh, the clipping volume is the is just another mesh item. It's a cubic mesh item that I'm going to be using in the Boolean operation. So let me turn these off and just walk through the stack real quick, right? So the first step is merge meshes, which just copies the base mesh to the operator mesh. Uh, I do a Boolean uh, against that clipping volume that I was talking about. So you see if I turn on the clipping volume, that's doing a subtraction right there. It's just knocking that, uh, lopping that bit off the mesh. And then a mirror operation to put it on the other side. Now, why is this, why is this better than regular symmetry you're asking? Okay. Well, uh, if I select my clipping, sorry, I uh, select my base mesh and I move it over, let's say here a little bit. And then I want to say, well, let me rotate it a little and I'll spin this around like this. Now, then if I go back to my symmetry op, it's all spun, trimmed, clipped. It allows me to make some really, really interesting shapes. But if I go back to my base mesh and I give it some more more tweaking, you can see the, like you can just generate all kinds of interesting shapes. You can scale, do whatever you want to do. Let's give it a warp out this way. And then if I go back to my symmetry op, it's all nicely clipped and put together and everything looks nice, except for this spludgy bit that's happening here. I'm not sure where that is, but you get the idea. So just for a little extra fun, you can see that I've added a second copy of that a mesh op stack down here and he's got a clipping volume set up on the Y axis. So I, you know, I've rotated them down here. So I'm going to turn off the first stack and just leave the second stack visible. Now he is, um, he's taking the first uh, symmetry op uh, as his base mesh. So he's mirroring whatever the first, so he's clipping and mirroring whatever the first stack is doing. So you can see if I grab the base mesh and I pull it down so if it goes below the floor, now it's clipping with that. So we have two clips happening and rotating those around, you can really start to get into the freaky shapes you know, and the really creative stuff that would be hard to model out from scratch. But with a symmetry modifier, you get this kind of stuff just kind of for free. It kind of falls out of it, which is really, really nice. So yeah, I think that's the entirety of what I wanted to show. Just, you know, the power of this makes for a very smooth workflow, especially when you're trying to explore and find shapes. This works really good for sci-fi stuff, for sure. So with that said, hopefully somebody will pick this up and run with it. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Uh, it occurs to me that I forgot to mention one of the most important parts. Sorry about that those clip volumes that I had uh, that were aligned to the various axes, the ideal situation would be that they would be attached to some sort of a locator so I could rotate and move the origin and orientation of the clip volume uh, easily, basically. Uh, probably the ideal plugin would allow me to 
to, to select some geometry and it would automatically uh, align the clip plane to that geometry for me uh, straight out of the gate you know before it created the mesh stack and um, oh and when I freeze the mesh it it shouldn't include that clip volume that should just you know uh, magically go away so anyway uh, those are all my demands <laughs> and I'll see you next time